Hey guys, it's Kelly. Welcome back to an all new purchase or pass. So I try to film these about once a month, so it's time to do a new one. There's a ton of new makeup to talk about. I'll let you know if I'm interested in any of these, which ones I'm gonna be skipping over. If you are new here, hello, my name is Kelly. Here on this channel, I love focusing on cruelty-free beauty. So if that sounds good to you, make sure that you subscribe and let's go ahead and hop into it. Okay, I love wearing a bold lip, but I feel like I constantly have to check and make sure I don't have any of my teeth. This is actually Milani I Am Bold. That's the name of this lip today. Let's start with a skin tint segment, and later on, we're gonna have a cream blushes segment because it feels like those are the main categories that are being launched right now. But let's talk skin tint slash like lighter coverage foundations, etc. So we have two to talk about from Makeup Revolution brands. I'm just saying Makeup Revolution brands because there's like Revolution Pro, I can't keep up. So they're all, these next two are Makeup Revolution related, but something within there. So first they have a Skin Perfector CC Tint. So this is supposed to have shade adapting technology, which was funny because I was reading through the comments on Trend Mood and it seemed like a lot of people were really interested in this and thought that was a cool concept but it's definitely not new. I remember watching like makeup commercials probably a decade ago and what brand had this like super popular shade adjusting foundation? I feel like it was Almay or one of those main drugstore brands from like a decade ago and they had a shade adjusting foundation. I remember, I feel like I, I feel like I've tried a shade adjusting foundation before and it did not really do that much adjusting. How my eyes try today? But that's, I don't know, I haven't tried this one, so I can't say how effective it is or not. But they suggest that this range will have a shade for everyone. It is $16, which is a little pricey. I've seen so many of these new skin tints priced higher, like $16 to $20, which just feels a bit high, especially because, okay, I'm not a cosmetic chemist, so take everything I'm about to say with a grain of salt because this could be completely wrong, but... I am surprised that now that there's a big shift into light coverage products that they're so much more expensive because I would think based on the amount of pigment needed to create a lighter coverage product that the formulation wouldn't be as expensive to produce and that could be completely wrong. So if you're a cosmetic chemist watching this, you can let us know down below, but does that feel backwards to anyone else? It could just be that products are getting more expensive. I did a video all about that. I'll leave a link down below talking about drugstore makeup prices rising. But all of that to say, I actually am kind of interested in this and I'm I'm debating picking up this or one of the many other skin tint slash foundations we're gonna talk about today. So this is on my maybe list. Most of today's video is on my anti-haul list, but this one I'm considering. Even though, okay, I'm going to do an update on my no buy probably in the next couple of weeks. So if you guys don't know, I do a product specific no buy pretty much every year where I pick out categories that I wanna slow down on and I kinda of cap how many I'm gonna buy or I just say I don't wanna buy any of those for a certain number of months and that time span is coming to an end. So I'm gonna do a video pretty soon updating you guys on that, letting you know whether or not I wanna continue it or add some other categories. And I feel like for my own sake, I should probably add foundations, skin tints, tinted moisturizers, because I really want to buy them all, but maybe I need to put like a cap on how many I can buy this year, like three or I don't know. What do you guys think? Are you tempted by them too? Because this next one is the face and body from Soul Body. Now I've heard a lot of mixed thoughts on this. I know not everyone's into the idea of body makeup, but I don't hate this idea. And I think it makes a lot of sense for Soul. I don't really wear body makeup that's not true. I do sometimes put like body makeup on my chest or my shoulders, especially if my face doesn't quite match or like my self tan is looking a little funky. I might do a little bit of body makeup to adjust that, but I used to wear body makeup a lot. So fun fact, I used to do pageants way back in the day and everyone wears body makeup for those. So it was Sally Hansen airbrush legs. This was long before I went cruelty free. I went through probably dozens of bottles of that stuff because it just, you can, you apply it all over your body. It evens it out. It just looks smooth. It looks very nice for stage. And I understand that the average person maybe does not feel the need to wear body foundation on any sort of a consistent basis, but I do think there are scenarios where it's helpful and it makes sense, especially 
for the stage, for a performance, for the red carpet, which again, most of us, myself included, are not doing, but I do think there's a purpose for body makeup, so I don't really hate this release. I actually am a little bit interested in it, but I know if I purchased it, I would mostly use it for my face, but maybe a little bit on my chest in the summer. Probably not though. I feel like I'd mostly use it on my face but I think it's a cool launch. Another face and body foundation from Makeup Revolution, going back, like I said, more from them. It's called the Body Veil. It's $18 though. Again, these aren't getting so pricey. This one claims to have lightweight buildable coverage. You guys let me know, are you into the body makeup trend? I'm assuming we're gonna see a few more brands come out with like face and body products. Again, like I said, definitely not a new concept, but it feels like they're having a bit of a moment right now. Sticking with base, there is a new makeup brand and A-Rod is kind of the spokesmodel for it. And this is a makeup brand specifically marketed at men. And uh, there seem to be some polarizing thoughts on the marketing of this brand, which I, I understand. So the brand is called Hims, and they created a blur stick to cover razor burn, dark circles, blemishes, Eight shades, $17 a piece. And again, it's marketed for men. And my first thought when I think of makeup for men, I'm like, well, that's just makeup. Makeup is for everyone. But, you know, I have heard the argument that maybe this makes it a bit more approachable for someone that might be intimidated by makeup and does not feel comfortable wearing it. So I also do get that aspect of it. But it kind of feels like when you go to the grocery store and you go to buy a razor and then you have the normal razors that anyone could use and then you have the pink razors and they're like razors for women because they're pink but they're just like the same thing but more expensive i'm conflicted because i do think makeup is for everyone and should be for everyone and i want everyone to feel comfortable wearing makeup if it's something that they want to wear but i also understand that maybe this approach might make someone feel a little bit more comfortable applying makeup when previously they felt it wasn't for them. Let's also point out that this marketing approach has been very effective for them because I feel like everybody is talking about it, both good and bad, but everyone is talking about it. And had they just launched this and said, this is like a concealer stick, I don't think there would be this much conversation. Ooh, we skipped a skin tint. See, there's so many, I'm like losing track. Okay, Flex, what was I about to say? I was. Tarte has one and it's called the Hydroflex Serum Foundation. Okay, there are only so many serum foundations that you can buy, Kelly, so you need to reel it in. What gets me about this one, I know nothing about the formula. I have watched zero reviews, but the packaging and the color has me wanting to buy it. And that's not a good reason to buy makeup, Kelly. You need to, you need to reel it in. 32 shades retails for $39. It has hyaluronic acid, water, niacinamide. I think what I need to do is in my next shot, my stash rotation, I just need to put in a few of my favorite skin tints, like the Flower Beauty one, maybe even like the ColourPop Tinted Moisturizer, not a skin tint, but like similar type of product. I think I just need to put in the ones that I have that I love and I need to use what I have slash love, like I just said. So I don't need any right now. This is what I'm telling myself. I don't need these, but I want them but for the time being, I'm talking myself out of them and maybe I can talk you out of them too. Let's talk about a release from MAC just quickly. I don't purchase from MAC because they're not cruelty free, but I did want to say that all of my predictions are coming true. So yes, I think I'm psychic. This prediction only halfway came, through, came true, but I did want to mention it. Do you guys remember in my makeup predictions video, I said that ColourPop would do a 101 Dalmatians collection because I knew Disney was coming out with the new live action Cruella this year. Well, we have not seen it from ColourPop at this point. The movie's here, so I don't think it's gonna happen, but we did see a collection from MAC. Also from Sally Hansen too. I mentioned that one in another video. But this collection, it looks terrible. You know, with most launches, I feel like I can see like, you know, it might not be for me, but it might be for someone else. With this one, I genuinely look at this and I don't know who the audience is. I mean, I'm assuming the audience they were going for was the fan base for Corella DeVille, but I don't think they reached that. I have never seen a launch that looks more discombobulated than this palette. And the palette has so few shades for how much dead space there is. This honestly feels like a MAC launch that came out 10 years ago that you could buy on eBay right now. 
This actually makes me more bummed that ColourPop didn't do the collection because I had this whole vision that I talked about in my predictions video where ColourPop would do like Dalmatian print blushes and bra, well, the blushes and bronzers would be normal, but the packaging, they would have their older square packaging with Dalmatian print on it. Maybe even some split pans for like the Cruella hair. So much could have been done here and this is about as underwhelming as it gets. Okay, let's talk about the one lonely highlighter release before we jump into a sea of blushes. But M Cosmetics is coming out with the new Moonbeam Cushion Highlight inspired by Moonbeams. It's a skin loving highlighter that wears like a beam of moonlight. What a beautiful description that is. I, okay. I really want to try M Cosmetics, especially the serum blushes. I just have not been able to get those out of my mind. I'm sure one day I will. Not will get it out of my mind. I'm sure I will buy it one day. So I've kind of been paying close attention to their launches. And this I thought was something that I would love until I saw the swatches. And I do think that a lot of people will probably love this. But when I saw the swatches, I realized it's not the type of highlighter that I like because it looks very glittery. And I know that there's an audience for that, and I'm sure someone is so excited to buy this. And I do like that type of glitter, but I like it as an eyeshadow. So I feel like if I were to purchase these, I'd probably be using them mostly on my eyes. And for $30, that's just not worth it to me. But I do like that they come out with launches that are a bit different, like a cushion highlight. Let me know if you have other recommendations from the brand, but this one's probably not for me personally. Okay, this next one, I was fully ready to come on here and tell you guys, yes, I'm going to buy this blush right when my blush no buy ends. But I have changed my mind and I'm going to tell you why. This is the product. These are the new blushes from Natasha Denona. These are the puff paints. Love the matte packaging. Love how simple it is. Love that you can dot it on. Love, love, love. I thought I needed these until I watched Morgan Turner's review while getting ready to film this video. I'm gonna leave it linked down below, but after watching her video, I was like, nope, I think I'm gonna pass on those. So she mentioned that when she first tried them, just applying it over foundation, she liked them, but in the video, she applied it when she had already powdered her under eyes and they just completely picked up everything. And from what she was saying in the review, the first two shades are so sheer. It seemed like the formula was a bit finicky and for $22, it's just not worth it to me, especially when there are a plethora of blush launches right now. If one is just so-so, it's probably not one that I need. However, if you're watching this and you have tried it and you have a different opinion on it, let us know down below. Maybe I could be persuaded but as of right now, I think I'm gonna skip it. Jouer has some cream sticks. Okay, so I just did a cream ranking video. If you missed it, I'm gonna leave it linked down below, but my biggest takeaway from that video was that apparently I don't love cream products in stick format. And we learned that in that video because all of my lowest ranked products were like those cheek sticks. It's so strange too, because in my mind, I think I like those. And then when I see them being launched, I'm like, ooh, I've gotta have that. But in reality, they tend to be my least used and my least favorite type of cream cheek products. So just knowing that about myself, I know that these aren't for me. And this is their summer collection, but I wish they would have done at least like three of them. Looking at the swatches, there's definitely room for like a deep cherry or just more of a bold, deeper tone there. I feel like they're definitely missing that. And those retail for $32 a piece and they're available now. As always, when I do these videos, I try to leave everything linked down below. Some of these products aren't out yet. So if that's the case, of course, I won't have a link to it, but I should have everything linked down below. If you guys do shop through those links, those are monetized links. So thank you so much. I'll always no pressure, but... I do wanna point that out. KVD has some cream blushes as well. Now we do have a second KVD launch I wanna focus on in today's video also, but with this brand, I feel like they're having the turnaround that no one saw coming. They were struggling for a while there and I thought, like I didn't think they were gonna be able to come back, but start they started off very strong with the Good Apple Foundation. Well. Maybe not, because I've heard some bad reviews, but I think it gained so much popularity that people are watching out for KVD now, and I am too. So I'm sitting here like, what are they going to do next? What's going to be next? And even I was looking on their Instagram today before filming this and just prepping for the video, 
everything seems so well branded now. I feel like they have a very clear direction of what their brand is. I know they say they're like tattoo themed beauty, which is very specific, but I feel like it's a good niche for them. So it seems like they've turned around. They do have these new cream blushes, very on trend. So these are the new Mod Con Liquid Gel Blush. It's interesting they have more of a gel based formula because a lot of blush launches right now are a bit more thin and serum-y. So this in itself does seem a little bit different. I remember years ago having this gel blush from Pixie. I don't think they make it anymore, but it was that like sheer jelly formula. I didn't love it. Personally, I like my cream blushes to be like a thin serum-y like liquid blush. Or, you know, I like the shimmery, sparkly ones, like the Charlotte Tilbury or the new Bite ones. So I'm probably going to pass over this one personally, but the timing is very good. I feel like they're, they're getting back on track, and I'm watching out for KVD. Which will segue us to this palette that I have mm, some thoughts on. I think this palette would be so pretty if they took the stars off of the packaging. This might be a me thing, and maybe you're watching this and you're like, no, girl, the stars are the cutest part. But I just feel like if that was a clear window, this would be 10 times better. But having those stars on there gives me Claire's makeup vibes. But it's called the Planet Fanatic Palette. 14 shades inspired by earth tones. The swatches, I mean, has this been done before? Yeah, but I, they're shades people wear. That's the thing. When it comes to makeup, it's so tough because people say they want new, they want different. But at the end of the day, this is the kind of makeup that sells. And the brands that are constantly releasing color stories that we see often, it's because the brands have learned that that's what people will buy. Whereas sometimes some brighter palettes, while there's obviously an audience for that, I just feel like it's not as large as people that are gonna wear these earth tones. So I get why brands play it safe. I think that this is pretty. And I also think that they did a good job incorporating some colors, but in a more muted way, which you guys know is right up my alley. That's what I love. And the shades in here, they're not too intimidating. It's very approachable, especially for someone that does wear neutrals often. Also love that they have been doing fully recyclable packaging. I think that's really cool to see. I'd love to see other brands start to follow suit. This is available now in Europe. Ooh, okay, sticking with palettes, another polarizing palette, The well, a collection, the Prince Collection from Urban Decay. Let me start off by saying I like Prince, but I don't know if I'm the biggest die-hard Prince fan to have an opinion on this palette. So let me get that out of the way first. I don't hate this when I look at it, but again, I think maybe if I was born a little bit earlier and I, I did grow up a little bit more with Prince, maybe I would feel differently about this. So I'm sure that is playing a factor in it. I don't know. It's kind of what I expected from Urban Decay for this launch. Also with Urban Decay, since they started, purple has kind of been their signature color. They've always branded themselves with that purple tone. So that part of the collab, I do think kind of meshes well together. I'm not interested in picking any of this up, but let me know if you are down below. Like I said, I've heard a lot of people are not interested in this. Speaking of not interested in and sticking with palettes, this is the ColourPop You Are Golden palette. A pet peeve I often have with palettes is when there are so many shades that are similar. And the thing is, when you swatch them out on your arm, you're going to see those minute differences. But when you are creating an eyeshadow look and utilizing other colors, you're really not going to know if you used the brown that's like slightly deeper or the brown that's slightly lighter, slightly more cool toned. I think that this, again, Going back to the KVD palette, while I look at this and I'm a little bit underwhelmed, I can see why brands keep coming out with palettes like this because this is what most people wear on a day-to-day -day basis and it's neutral enough to entice a lot of people but it all also has some pops in case you want to switch it up. So this is the type of palette I see being perfect for someone that does not have a very large makeup collection but wants to have a little bit of variety while still doing a lot of the same looks on a day-to-day -day basis. Like that's the audience for this palette. So I get why brands keep doing this, but it's probably not for me. ColourPop also has some new palettes from Ulta. I just can't even keep track. Like all of these palettes, I'm like, is this a re-release? And usually it's not. And I'm like, really? They all blur together to me, but 
clearly they're selling, so good for ColourPop, but I, I don't have a lot of interest in it. Dose of Colors is collaborating with Nima Tang to come out with this beautiful lip collection. I think this is stunning. And the packaging, they just nailed it. Going back to what MAC did for the Cruella de Vil collection, if they would have taken an approach more like this, but made this black and white, like ugh, there's just so many cooler things they could have done. Anyways, back to this. I think they nailed this. It's beautiful. So the products are available in a set, which is kind of a bummer, but they do have the coral lip set and the nude lip set each for $45. So a huge congratulations to Nima Tang. I think this launch looks amazing. Lunar Beauty is discontinuing their initial launch of Life's a Drag, and they're coming out with kind of a remastered version of this. And you know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of the Carly Bible first collab with BH Cosmetics that did so well that they redid it with some additional shades. This is like the same concept. Other brands have done similar things before. The only downside is that if a customer already has the Life's a Drag palette, you're going to get a lot of duplicate shades here. Maybe if that's your favorite palette though, maybe you've hit pan on a lot of those. I feel like there's a lot of range to a palette like this though, especially because it has a white and a black. So whenever you have those shades in a palette, they expand the amount of looks you can create significantly, especially when you have kind of like a rainbow of colors, plus you have the white and the black, you can mix things, you can make it more pastel, you can mix shades together. For me, you guys know, three years ago-ish, I loved bright eyeshadow looks, but these days I wear something a lot more muted. Like I still love color and I still love playing around a bit, but I wear more muted colors. I'm not usually wearing primary, secondary colors on my eyes. I'm usually doing more toned down colorful looks. That's kind of my style. So this is definitely not for me, but I'm sure it will sell well for the brand. ELF is creating a new version of the Poreless Putty Primer. They've got a few of these now. This is the Acne Fighting Poreless Putty Primer. It's got 1.8% salicylic acid. So this is coming on June 3rd. It's shown to be green and it looks like it's gonna appear kind of like a sheer green on the skin. It doesn't say that here, but that's gonna be my assumption. And that's great for color correcting if you do have a lot of redness. I get why ELF did this because that product is so popular for them. They're making a bunch of different versions of it. It's kind of like the new version of their pump primers. Do you guys remember those when they had so many different kinds? It feels like that's the approach they're taking out with the poreless putty since it is one of their hero products. I definitely don't need this since I have almost an entirely full poreless putty primer that I do not use that often. I do not need to buy another one that is green, but I think this will probably sell well for e.l.f. Let me know your thoughts on any of these products that we talked about today in the comment section down below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll go ahead and see you in my next one. Bye.